What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another rebuild on Madden 21 and today we are doing a realistic rebuild of the Chicago Bears. Of course, I wasn't going to do this because I was like, eh, Andy Dalton, eh, Kyle Fuller released and whatnot, but I noticed that we actually haven't done, done a Bears rebuild in a while and I have a feeling that they're not going to have a super like interesting draft, so this could be the last one for Madden 21. Regardless, though, we made a lot of the moves. Only one we don't have is Andy Dalton, to my knowledge. Of course, Cordero, we did not re-sign. Uh, of course, we tagged Robinson. Mooney's there. We actually released Jimmy Graham, which I think, I mean, honestly, they actually probably should give a good hard look at doing so uh, defensively. Uh, looking at the team, you know, they've, they've got a couple of pieces here and there, but they obviously are missing quite a bit. We still have to think about releasing Akeem Hicks, which I don't think we will. I mean, it's a lot of money, but I think he's worth 8.5 slash 9 mil still, in my opinion. Of course, Foles uh, is the projected uh, starter so far because we obviously don't have Andy Dalton yet. I'm not really sure what overall I want to make Andy Dalton. I'll have to kind of look at some things, but... He should be here in free agency, right? Yeah, he is. He's a 69 overall, which I don't know how much they paid him. I know it's a 10 mil, but I don't know how much is guaranteed. You got to think at least four of it is. Oh, it's not. It's a base of three and seven for the bonus. So they are stuck with him. Three plus seven is apparently 9.95. Of course, with some of the moves we made, available funds, fair enough. I, I don't know what their real life available funds are, but... Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to pretend like it's uh, all sunshine and rainbows. Of course, Tariq Cohen coming back healthy. You would imagine he would be the number two. He would take over some return man ability uh, or return man responsibility, I suppose. Uh, I don't know who else they would maybe re-sign. Could look for a wide receiver, maybe even a tight end. Uh, obviously, not every move is going to be perfect because I did have to go active roster, so we would have the most accurate uh, draft picks and all that. So some things may be a little off, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it's fun. All right, we uh, we got done with our first wave of free agents. Crevion LeBlanc returns after uh, a few seasons out. I think in, what, Philly? Uh, Andy Dalton, of course, the one-year 10. Uh, Pat Alfline has a three-year, like, seven or eight. I don't know. Maybe it was a two-year. I don't know. And then Isaiah McKenzie, I believe a guy that they're actually looking at in real life, two-year six. Not a bad little deal. And uh, let's go to the draft now. Obviously, we're not going to the draft, but we have picked 20 in the first three rounds. No fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. So, yeah, definitely some interesting stuff. Would you be able to get a quarterback? I don't know. Mac Jones may be a potential player. Uh, of course, this is a different draft class, or at least it's an updated one. Uh, and I haven't actually done an updated class in a decent bit. Wide receiver definitely on the list for this team. And I'm not really sure who I would want for them to go for. I mean, I, would, I don't know who. You know, I'm a Packers fan. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, I don't think maybe, maybe not that high. You know, you got the top two looking to re-sign Allen Robinson, assuming we can afford him. I mean, really, your, your look would be defense if you can't get a quarterback, right? Maybe O-line, the right side of the line, isn't looking super hot. We got Austin Blythe on a two-year 10, and then Lancaster is a cheap little deal just to have a backup there, just in case we do maybe get rid of Akeem Hicks or something during the draft. I don't know. And we also get Monte Nicholson, who's probably the projected strong safety. All right, here we are at the start of the draft. Let's see what happens. Trevor Lawrence, of course, another quarterback. No, it's Parsons at two. Sewell at three. Jamar Chase at four. The Falcons take a lot of wide receivers in our Sims. Uh, Devontae Smith to the Eagles, not bad. Rasu to the Lions, it's a pretty good pick. Farley to the Panthers, could see it. Quiddy Pay, interesting. Okay, we're, I mean, we're getting close. I mean, there's a lot of different players that could be there. I mean, I think this team may have to go corner in the first round, but, I mean, it is always best available pick, isn't it? One more pick, and... All right, so this is very interesting now because we have a guard as an option. Of course, I just do – it's just not going to happen. Okay, simply put, if this team wants to trade up for a quarterback, it's going to have to be in the top 10. I think maybe if this team's lucky, they get one at 10 if they trade up. No chance there's actually going to be any of the big four quarterback names there for the Bears at 20. It's just not going to happen. So instead, we're going to take a more realistic look. And uh, where's the guard? Don't we have the guard? Here he is. Wyatt Davis. 
may be that player. Of course, Terrence Marshall, I don't think wide receivers that big of a need to where Chicago should take one at 20 but man passing up on one of the corners is not an easy task it's such a 50 50 because one hand this team needs cornerback so des desperately but at the other hand you have a really good right guard here who will be the starter for some time whereas a corner might not work out and there are several options here there's there's like four to six names you have pick 20 could always trade up I think we're to go with the lineman. I don't know. Uh, 74 overall. He is hidden. Okay, so I was saying, you know, this is why, you know, this guy could be the starter for a long time because usually he's hidden because of how good of a player he, uh, project, you know, projects to be. But, yeah, I wasn't 100% sure. But at the same time, I'm not 100% sure about any of the players uh, here as we do see that four corners are still there. Stokes is still somehow there. Do we have another corner? And we've, we've got options, right? We've got options. Let's just keep an eye on those corners that are going to start flying here soon. Stokes to the Jets would be a win for them. Travis Etienne. Wow, the, the Falcons loaded up on offense. Uh, Ife2, Malafonwu. There's still two corners left. Let's see if we can land any of them. Trill on this roster seems to be a pretty decent player. So, you know, maybe he's the guy. At the end of the day, if he's updated at least, it's a win because, of course... Uh, he has really good uh, potentials for for his combine grade. So you could obviously work that up at least. Whereas if they're a slow player, you can't really do anything about it. And there might be two corners there. Is there? Mac Jones is still there. I don't expect that to be the case either. So Kelvin Joseph or Tyson Campbell or Trill Williams didn't get a chance to scout any of them. Tyson looks like the best. Kelvin Joseph is the highest projection. Trill is... I mean, I gotta go Campbell, right? Like, Campbell just has the best combine grade. Let's see if there's anyone else here, though. Tylen Wallace would actually not be a bad choice either. I think corner is a bit bigger of a need, though. I think either go Tyson, Kelvin, or Trill. Right now, it looks like Sis... Uh, not Cisco. Campbell or or Trill, but Kelvin's the highest projection. 6'1", 6'2", 6'2". What's the ages? Are they all 21? Ah, oh, well, it's definitely between the top two then. Uh, late third projection or mid third? I guess you're going mid third. Tyson Campbell, and he is hidden. This man is a guy you can almost always depend on in a class. Ooh, Excel is kind of trash, but I mean, we, we didn't have an, enough scouting points, so the fact that we even got anyone is, is pretty impressive. Anyone hidden, of course, is what I meant. Is Sean Wade actually a strong safety? Because I, I don't... All the classes we've used, he's a corner, so I, I mean, I have no idea. Well, let's go to pick 20 in the third round and see who's there. Mukuamu, one of the cornerbacks, uh, just goes. Uh, we have LeCount. Trill is still there. That is, hmm, that is interesting. I feel like safety is a bigger need, but Monte Nicholson's not that bad. And I don't know if McCount actually, McCount, LeCount actually would fit as a strong safety. He's kind of on the smaller side. I'd rather have, like, Hufanga, but, I mean, Bit of a riskier choice, it seems. So, I mean, we might just take Trill as well. Late third. Uh, he's going to probably be normal because, uh, you know, every single class we have him in, he's normal. But he will have really good, uh, you know, 40 time and all that. So, it's still worth it. And he's not. He is hidden. Yo, we fixed the cornerback position in one draft for the Bears. Which is, yeah, I'm so happy to do that. And I think we're going to go to the fifth round. The Bears would probably look to trade up in the fourth to make a play at Kellen Mond, who is unfortunately gone. Damn. We sold beyond belief. The Bears would have to draft a quarterback, right? Like, there's just no way they come out of the class without one. It just seems like the value isn't there for a quarterback. So we're going to go to pick 20, and we're going to take Sam Ellinger. I wonder if that guy that's always uh, asking for a Sam Ellinger rebuild is here. He's like, about damn time, boy. It's like, I know, I'm sorry. Sam Ellinger, 61 overall normal. Could he have a chance? Probably not. At least we say we tried. A.K.A. the Bears front office in real life. Hey, I'm trying to keep it realistic, you know? We're going to take the one. No, we're not going to take him. We're going to take Sam Williams just because we kind of need a pass rusher. Sam Williams, 64 overall uh, normal development. Not a whole lot going on there. We're going to take a fullback. Tory Carter in the seventh. 70 overall, not bad. Of course, Wyatt Davis, hidden development. I know people are going to cry if I, 
I look at the devs, so I'm not going to. And hold A to reorder. Can't wait. To be fair, all we have to do is just go to the the, the combine thingy. Not the combine, the uh, the scouting. We'll fix it soon. Is there any money we can get rid of? No, we cannot. Sweet. All right, now we have that stupid hold A to reorder. Uh, Andy Dalton, I think we're going to make him like a 74 overall. I don't know if that's really going to matter, but... At his age, which is 33, you know, we kind of, you know, we let Cam have a chance at a comeback in his career. So if Andy Dalton has a season, maybe we, uh, you know, up him a little bit as well. Maybe he becomes an X-Factor. Who freaking knows? But as of right now, quarterback is the number one need here. The question is, will we be able to release the, well, I mean, obviously Andy Dalton, you know, he needs a re-signing if he actually plays well. But will we be able to, like, save some money here after the season with Foles and, and Dalton maybe to, Sign a free agent because there could be some guy in like the 80s, like low 80s. I'm not sure. It seems like Chicago is willing to spend. So if there's someone there, they're they're going to be hard to beat. I would imagine. And uh, of course, defensively, a lot more uh, a lot more non bronze, which I like to see. Non normals. Uh, the cornerback position seems to be filled. It is going to be a bit of a challenge though because they are low overalls. But I mean, it looks all right. Strong safety. Maybe look for that in the future. Obviously, middle nine, linebacker number two. Robert Quinn needs to be replaced, even though he's on a four-more-year situation. Uh, O-line actually looks pretty damn good. I know there's some age on the left side and whatnot, but it's not you know, a lot better than I thought it was going to be, right? 77 overall, but still. All right, we have re-signings. As much as I love Allen Robinson, I feel like Roquan should be the priority, although it seems like we have uh, quite a bit of money coming up here. Uh, we're definitely going to be re-signing pretty much everyone here. Allen Robinson, the Bears sign, uh, promised him a long-term deal. That should keep him pretty happy, right? Not that they, they've done a really good job with that lately. James Daniels, that might be a 4 or a 5. Uh, Bilal, that'd probably be like a 2 or a 3. And Andy Dalton, I forgot to upgrade. Hey, there we go. Monte Nicholson gets to star. and he gets 20K. I don't remember how much we signed him to. It was either a 2 or a 3, but... Okay, not bad at all. Wait, Monte just got up to superstar now. Yo! Headed to the playoffs, and in traditional Bears fashion, they somehow find a way to make a crazy comeback on the season and make the playoffs last second. It's so weird. Oh, man. Actually, it would have been more traditional if we would have went like 3-0, lose 5, win the rest, or something weird. I don't know. But, of course, 9-7. and seven. Andy Dalton, okay numbers. I mean, I think that warrants a re-signing. I mean, it's kind of 50-50. David Montgomery, 965 with seven touchdowns. Mooney is obviously a superstar. Robinson, meh, kind of a down year. Cole Komet, not bad. Blocking, pretty bad considering it's you know, not a bad O-line unit after that first free agency period or offseason. Robert Quinn with nine sacks. Definitely have to boost him a little bit because, of course, with his age and his dev, May not be that great of an overall. I'd say that's probably good enough to get him to like an 82, 83 overall. Uh, as far as kicking goes, Cairo Santos on a five-year deal. Not uh, not off to a great start with that. Tariq Cohen comes back from injury and gets himself a kick return touchdown. Not bad. The awards, Rodgers is the MVP, so we get to go against an MVP the first week. Love it. Any awards for us? Darnell Mooney, nice. Khalil Mack, nice. So we got, a, you know, we got some. We participated. Let's be honest, that's probably as far as our participation's about to go. In Green Bay for the wild card game, no snow, which is kind of a disappointment, kind of a letdown for both squads here. But let's uh, let's get into it. Andy Dalton versus Aaron Rodgers. You know, pretty close in talent, right? 7-0, <laughs> 7-all. Seven seven okay, nice little comeback touchdown. 17 or 14 to 7, 17 to 10, 17 all. Not bad. I mean, the Chicago Bears, we got a shot here. 24 all. Ooh, bad drive there. Down three. Let's slow it down a little bit. And that's the dagger. Devin Funches coming back strong from the COVID list. Gets a huge 48-yard touchdown. And that's the Bears just completely implode in the fourth quarter. As the game was closed all the way through, and you would have thought it was a blowout just by the, the final tally there. Andy Dalton actually kind of outplayed Rodgers. Not even kind of did but couldn't win as uh, the Packers rushing attack was just too much. Receiving Cole Komet was actually pretty good. Defensively anything. Roquan with a pick. 
Those fast linebackers, man, they, they get Green Bay every time. But yeah, unfortunately, one and done, we, we kind of expected that, which kind of sucks because, you know, no quarterback, but hey, you made it to the playoffs. <laughs> Ravens versus the Saints. Interesting matchup. I don't expect it, but it could happen. And the Saints win. So we did let Akeem Hicks kind of just like sit here. I think you let him go, right? I, I think it's it's about time. How much is Andy Dalton wanting? He wants a one-year six. He regressed a bit. Obviously, we can fix that. Do we fix that? Let's take a look at how those those ratings compared around the league. Puts him in eighth for yardage and 15 for touchdowns. What about his passer rating? He was the 27th ranked quarterback in passer rating. I, I ignored all these players, so... Yeah, I mean, I feel like Chicago would be willing to let him stay on. How much money do we have? Uh, I'd say he'd be worth at least a 12 mil this time, maybe even 15. We're going to let him go and hope for the best. I actually changed my mind and offered him a, a one-year 12, and he didn't want to take it, which is unfortunate, but it'd be what it'd be. All right, so the Bears have... Oh, I didn't even think about looking at DevOps. Obviously, you see that Mooney had a dev up without a doubt. Uh, but Mooney gets a dev up. No one else on offense gets a dev up. Defensively, Robert Quinn gets the superstar. Monte was already superstar with his his breakout. So Robert Quinn's a superstar. We're going to boost him up, I think, to an 83 overall. I think it's fair. Nine sacks is, is pretty damn good, right? And he gets the superstar, so the game definitely feels that way as well. Let's get that speed a little bit back up, actually. And, you know, maybe that uh, that contract's worth it after all. Look who's in free agency. We, we can't. We can't do that. Uh, and we get Brandon Williams on a one-year $5 million deal, which is, like, way cheaper than Akeem. Akeem was going to be a two-year 32. So I think we made a good decision there. And look at Jair and Devontae. I swear, if I see this in real life, if I see Jair in free agency in real life, I will cry. Like, he will get, like, a five-year $130 million in real life, probably. Or we actually get some backups and uh, even a potential starter. Marcus Marriott on a one-year $8 million deal, fully guaranteed. And then some backups. Perriman may be a projected starter, though. All right, so for quarterbacks, there's really only one decent one. It's Curtis Williams, but of course, he's an early first. So unless he falls, like I just hiccuped, uh, probably not worth it. There are some other players, but I say... We just moved down to our pick. Honestly, there's not much more we could do. Now, this is a tough decision because there still are quarterbacks there, but they're all red talent grade. Like, I just don't know if you want to take this guy, David Henderson, who yeah, might be worth a shot, or Kirk Pearson in the fifth. I think he maybe go to Pearson. I don't know why I have the hiccups as well. This is very interesting. But I don't know, dude. We could also draft the fastest middle linebacker I've literally ever seen in Madden. Vaughn Brooks or Dylan Lampert. I think we're going to take Vaughn Brooks' script. And he's hidden. How? 72 overall with 92 speed. And he should be faster than that, if we're going to be honest. That is a beast. I don't even know if this is fair. I just offered it just to see where we were, but they took it. So 55 for and 119 for 39. Which actually allows us to grab the pass rush linebacker as well. Mr. Dylan Lampert. His top skills aren't super great, but the combine grade's good enough for me. I'm going to risk it. Oh, hiccup again. 72 overall. He, he kind of put him either way. You want to put him in coverage or not. I guess he's just going to learn behind Mac and Quinn. Not a bad duo to sit behind. And I keep hicking it up and I don't even know what I just said. And I suppose there's no better time to go quarterback than now. Maybe we get lucky. And we do. Hold up. He's kind of fast. He actually looks pretty decent. He's like Mitchell Trubisky. And I hiccup it again. I know. Now in the fifth round, we have a running back, which we could use. And we have a tackle, which we need probably more. more. Oh, my God, with these hiccups. I am going to draft him. I am going to regret it. We give a six this and a six next to grab that running back. I think this is a massive W of a trade for us. We... Will it take him? Oh, my Lord, of these hiccups. This is like a meme at this point. Larry Walford, 66 overall. A pretty good pick. And then we take our new starting punter, Taylor Gibson. We'll be looking for a new starting punter soon. All right, so Von Brooks is obviously going to be the number two middle linebacker now. 
you know, we're looking to start Perriman. It was like a, a one. Oh, Jesus. It was a one year deal. How are they going to give that guy superstar? How? How is that fair? That fast and superstar. Literally just un unfair. Oh, my Lord, with these hiccups. Of course, same with Kirk. I know he gave uh, Mariota a one year eight guaranteed, but it's not the worst thing that's happened over here. Only star, but hell. Got, you know, got hit in development. Decently young. He's obviously the starter. And we're also going to change his face because I'm sick of that player mold. It is so bad. All right, heading into season two. This is what the starting roster looks like. I know Mariota, we gave him that $8 million deal, but I think it's clear cut that this Pearson guy should start. It's, I mean, it's really a no brainer, honestly. You're getting like a kind of like a prime Mariota that actually has a very good chance to succeed. Uh, aggressive forcing, which is yikes. Paranoid, yikes. Throwaway, good. Uh, tight spiral, good. Predictable, balance. Again, you know, good stuff. You, know, you got some decent things there. Where number three, four is, of course, wide receivers perfectly fine. Number one and two are great. Number three and four, you know, pretty decent depth here. O line probably look to replace the left guard position soon. Center literally this season. And then Leno, we gave a two year twenty four, so he'll be there for a little bit. But of course, always looking for O line here in Chicago. Cole Komet. Kind of a slow start, 76 overall, 6,800 per upgrade, but he's a, you know, a pretty good catcher, right? Like, other than aggressive catch, he has literally every trait you could possibly want. Uh, unbalanced, I suppose, for penalties, kind of bad because he could hold. Linebackers, one of the best linebacking group is uh, in the league, considering you got Von Brooks, who honestly wasn't even as fast as he's supposed to. If if you would have given that 40 time and the, uh, you know, excel and agility stuff, to a wide receiver, you've probably been like 94 speed, 93, something ridiculous, but still absolutely insane. Cornerbacks, uh, once again, I think we have them ever since that first draft. I think we have them set. They just have to develop. Free safety, Eddie Jackson would be lovely to get this man back to superstar slash X Factor. Don't know if it's going to happen. Monte Nicholson, the biggest surprise of this entire rebuild so far uh, at superstar, has two more years on the contract. So, yeah, I mean, if I'm him, I try to hold out, but I don't know if that's really viable right like we gave you the extra chance it worked out be you be grateful i guess kind of plus it is a safety so i don't know like how that's gonna work i don't know dude and of course andy dalton we bumped him to a 79 overall he is now on the colts so uh we'll see how that goes for him see if we made a poor poor decision or not all right so we have so many signings david montgomery is one of them as much as i don't really think he's super special here he has been definitely good enough to get the contract, so we're going to give him a five-year worth, like, maybe 33. I think I think it's fair for both sides, mainly his side, because I don't think he's really that elite-type running back, but he's good enough to, uh, to be viable here. Eddie Goldman, I think we can replace him. I think at this point, even though he's not, you know, exactly, you know, in his 30s, I don't feel, nah, we'll re-sign him. I, I, it's only because of the money. I just feel like he's one of those... Uh, those veteran DTs you just pick up, so nothing really special there. Apparently, we have ourselves a a hidden development DT. If he wasn't asking for near, pretty much minimum, I wouldn't get him just because he's six. Uh, he's twenty four with only seventy nine strength, but I suppose depth. Yeah, nothing really super special here in re-signing. Austin Blythe will let go, and you know, some of these guys will let go. All right, a classic Bears potentially, and no, it's worse than a classic Bears. It is a come back on the season and then lose the final game, which may have put them in the postseason. At this point, okay, maybe you get a win. You lose these two, GG. Season's over. Instead, they win four of their last six. We knock ourselves out of what looks to be a top 10 pick, and here we are at 7-9. and nine. I'm not saying I felt like we were ready right now. I think this was still a pretty successful season, all things considered. Once again, David Montgomery, like I said, I think the contract's fair. Really not anything crazy special. Mooney, touchdowns were low, but the yards have been massive. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're definitely missing some pieces, uh, but not even just missing pieces, but we're just missing seasons, honestly. Like, you know, our quarterback, not a bad year. You know, for a rookie, 6'6 six, six overall, I think he actually had a pretty good year. Von Brooks, really good year. Rookie of the year, most likely an X-Factor dev up as well, so pretty damn good there. Let's actually take a look. I can't really remember, you know, imagine any other awards being won here. Rookie of the year, I, I forgot about that. Rookie of the year, most likely for both sides there, and we did get him. And that's pretty much it. As much as a losing season sucks, it wasn't the worst in the world, right? We're going to get a decent bit of XP boost for those two uh, those two rookies. See who makes it to the Super Bowl. So the Cowboys and the Bills, the winner of this one is the Cowboys. So 
Did we have any retirements? I don't really know. Oh, Tom Brady retires. Chicago Bears are Brandon Williams. Uh, the Cowboys do not have Andy Dalton anymore, so I'm not even sure what I'm looking at there. Uh, I'd imagine Andy Dalton's still around. This isn't like some mad, you know, he, like Andy Dalton's not like the greatest quarterback ever, but just kind of seeing what he did. So that's a massive season. That should be superstar, and he is superstar. So we maybe saw a little bit. Andy Dalton maybe should have been the guy, but we went with the young route. It is what it is. We got lucky. <laughs> we kind of got lucky, simply put. Uh, and, of course, for these resignings, we're going to let these guys go. Maybe we splash. I don't know. I would imagine our money situation isn't that bad, right? 41 mil and maybe even some more to, to clear. We can get a decent bit back from Tariq, but I actually kind of like Tariq Cohen, so I'm going to leave him here. Uh, and, yeah, Charles Leno would be on a decent contract. Cody Whitehair, I think, is still solid enough, so we're going we're gonna to keep him there. Robert Quinn dropped in overall. Didn't have a great season, so I'm not going to fix him. 77 overall, I think, is perfectly fair. And, yeah, that I wouldn't say there's much of a window because you kind of have to have a decent team to have the window. But, yeah, it kind of sucks to see where we are right now as a team. No dev up for Mooney, as we can see there. Hudson would be nice, but not today. Josh Allen is actually not asking for much here. I think you draft Josh Allen to replace in initially, you're replacing Robert Quinn, but this might be a guy that you keep around to replace Mac even, which is crazy to think about, but it's it's true. Oh, we did a little bit of a win, didn't we? Josh Allen, not a bad contract, and then Matthew Ioannidis, uh, maybe a little bit too expensive, but definitely building his defense back up to its, its glory days uh, as, I mean, this squad looks really solid, obviously. Josh Allen will be playing the right outside linebacker position for this season. And then, uh, you know, who knows what goes on forward. I don't know exactly the situation around here for for contracts. But max has got to be getting close to, uh, you know, needing another contract. And we can obviously see that with his old age, he's, he's getting up there. You know, 32 years old. He's 93 overall only. I mean, his overall, he's, he's not great. Honestly, you look to replace him after this season, potentially. Like, that's how bad of a drop he had. Five power move loss is huge. Like, that is brutal. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we got to replace him with Josh Allen. Quinn, I, I mean, I think we can get rid of him. We'll free 10 mil. I think we're going to take that. Four mil in savings. Don't really need him. Lambert would probably be just as good as Quinn, if not better anyways. So, there's really no reason to keep him. Uh, Campbell actually uh, hops Johnson here. So, there's that. Interior gets a lot better as well. Really, you're looking to, you know, probably just draft another offensive lineman. As you can see, we're in a, a bit of a spot here. We offered a couple of contracts to some linemen, but nothing too crazy. Uh, apparently, we're still at pick, uh, in the top 10, so uh, you can only imagine how good a pick it would have been hadn't we uh, won those several games near the end. Bro, it would have been a top 5 pick. Uh, don't know what we would have done with that top 5 pick anyways, but it appears there's some decent players here. There's corners going off the board left and right. Uh, I don't know if there's still a corner. There is. Uh, Lenny Hughes is a really, really solid-looking one, but that's really not the biggest need. Mid-first DT, that is one of our biggest needs. I think I think you probably take a guy there, right? Like uh, That seems like a fair pick. If this guy was faster, I'd go with him, but that, that 40 times looking a little rough. Uh, we also have a tight end. I'm not saying that I'm you know completely done on Cole Komet, but... This guy is a hard fella to pass. This looks like one of those, you know, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle conversation type of guys with that speed and that height. That is that is a tough man to stop. I really, really think the DT may be the direction we go. I never got to finish scouting this guy, but he's a mid-six. So there's really no risk taking him. But, yeah, I mean, unless we're going to trade down, I think we're going to take this DT. I'm not sure exactly why I backed out. He looks like the best choice. If we need a corner, I would take the corner. We don't. This guy looks like a freak. Hoping for the best. And he's very good, obviously. 77 overall, 81 speed, 85 excel. I mean, he's he's a solid player. Now we move to the start of the second round. If the tight end's there, we'll take him. He's not the biggest need in the world. That's why I didn't actually make a trade up. And he is gone. I would love to see how good he was. Uh, we do see that there are uh, there is a running back that we had on the list there. Once again, not the biggest need. We just signed a guy, and you know, we re-signed uh, David Montgomery, who's pretty damn good, right? We'll go to pick nine. If the guy's still there, we're taking him. If he's not, oh well. So it's either trade down, 
take a tackle or the running back. And the tackle looks pretty damn good, but it's a 50-50 shot. I really don't know what to expect. Antoine McCullers, our run game hasn't been super great, but I don't know if that's really David Montgomery's fault. He's averaging pretty good yardage. I just don't think we're running that much. Uh, high second running back to replace Cohen. Seems like a little bit of a reach. I would say tackle's probably bigger on the list. Do we have any other linemen? So we have a fourth rounder, mid fourth. Looks pretty good, actually. There's not a lot of options here. Um, we do have that other running back. Yeah, we're going to risk it on the tackle, Percy Crowder. And I really wish we didn't. Marcus Wheaton, 76 overalls. So I got to imagine McCullers like a 76 as well, and he is. So got to love that. We're going to sell again. Going to go for another lineman. I think mid-fourth, that guard looks pretty damn good. It's it's all speculation. It's all luck again. So we're going to go for it, get lucky, hopefully, and we don't. 77. I mean, what's even the point of drafting linemen? Like, why do I even do it? What's what's actually the point? Getting a hit and death lineman in the first three rounds is literally like winning the lottery times two. It's, it's actually that tough. It's actually insane. Gil Springs, this team needs a wide receiver and... This Gil Springs guy actually looks pretty damn athletic. We're going to take him. Gil Springs, 70 overall normal. Uh, very interesting that he ended up having 90 across the board for his athletics. This guy's really good, actually. 93 jumping. This is a jump ball machine. Like, you may not actually think about it. Maybe you think I'm, like, over-exaggerating. I'm overrating this guy. This guy's actually nuts. High stamina, high injury, Okay, juke ability, but the big thing that makes him so good is the fact that he's got aggressive catch. He's got 86 spec and 93 jumping. 93 jumping is is out of this world for a Madden draft. Actually ridiculous. That guy could actually make his way into the starting lineup. And now our DT was really good, so I'm not super pressed to grab another one. However, Mikel has a very good... F I gotta take Mikel. 73 overall normal. I knew he was gonna be really good, but... Is that someone we really needed? I don't know. And our running back's actually gone. The linebacker's there. The running back's not. I think we're going to trade up our final pick here and maybe something next year. Six round next year with a seven this year to go up to one in the sixth, finishing our draft. And we'll be getting another fast linebacker, Tony Crawford. See how good he is. 65 overall. Pretty rough, but usable, I suppose. Yeah, that draft didn't go so well. We didn't land a single hit in, did we? We probably should have taken the running back. Not even probably. We definitely should have taken the running back. It's just, if you're not going to go free agency, which I don't want to always go free agency for linemen, you're just not going to get... I mean, I just don't know. Of course, our DT was very good. Lenny Hughes was the guy we were going to go with, and overall, I'm pretty damn happy we didn't. Our tight end went two. Well, the guy we wanted at tight end went two picks before us. Of course, he's hidden. Of course, his traits are kind of trash, though. He's got fights for yards, which is decent, aggressive. I mean, fights for yards is cool and all, but, like, look at his abilities. Like, he has no juke ability, so way to go, EA. Aggressive catch is really nice, but the rest kind of lacking. You know, no possession, no run after the catch, and then no uh, feet and um, bounds. His development is star. So, I mean, he's a good player, but, yeah, let's take a look at the running back, and that's pretty much it, right? There wasn't much more to talk about. McCullers, Antoine McCullers, normal development, so... Doubt we would have started him out the gate, but yeah, I mean, he's a pretty good player, obviously. All right, moving on to year three. Of course, we do have a little bit of moving around to do because even though Gage is a higher overall, I think the Springs guy's got a lot of potential. O-line, it'd be nice to find a, a new center or guard because we could slide Daniels over, but I don't know if we're going to. Cole Komet, 79 overall. He's already 24, maybe 25 now, so kind of getting interesting, getting close there to the end uh, of developable uh, overall uh, Mac needs to be replaced. Lambert, I don't know if he can do it. Uh, Roquan and Vaughn are obviously, you know, the best tandem in the league now, or, or about to be. They're on their way. The trio of corners, get, you know, this team gives me, gives me uh, Tampa vibes. Maybe even better, debatably. You know, I, I get Tampa vibes, especially on defense, offense. Maybe not as good, but defensively, I get Tampa Bay uh, vibes for sure. So I expect great things. All right, it's re-sign time. Darnell Mooney, you know, the star around town here. Going to get himself a six-year 77 from us. Jalen Johnson, this is a little bit more debatable because we already do have two good corners. Uh, we'll think about it. Monte Nicholson, going to get a much better deal now. Going to give him a four-year 27. He takes it. Cole Komet, I mean, you kind of have to, right? He's not asking for a whole lot. He's done all right. 
Tariq Cohen probably gets let go. Charles Leno for sure gets let go. Uh, do we get... Nah, let's keep Tariq Cohen one more year. Let's do it. Why not? 45 mil left over. Do it to replace left tackle. Uh, and, I, I mean, I don't know. Jalen, he's a good player. It's just... I mean, we have Trill. Can we afford three cornerbacks? I don't... I guess, I guess maybe. And here we are, head to the playoffs. We are not, because we once again go 7-9. and nine. This time, though, well, I mean, not even say this time. It's it's always like this. We we win the last four of six every single time. Uh, it's just a nightmare that this keeps happening. And Kirk Pearson's not the reason. You know, he's playing pretty damn well. Montgomery, maybe it is time to look for a new running back. Montgomery's my contract's not crazy bad, so... You know, as a backup, it's a little high for backup money, but still, it's it's okay, I guess. Cole Komet could go to superstar. Touchdowns are very high. Catches and touchdowns, I think, are the things that matter most for tight ends. Mooney, no, not bad. And then Allen Robinson still playing pretty damn well, obviously. O-line, not even that bad considering Vaughn Brooks. Did he ever go to X-Factor, by the way? That's kind of a scam. Uh, two linebackers, both the linebackers over uh, 100 Ionitis, really good. Josh Allen, not bad for Madden. And Khalil Mack, really solid. So we had some pretty good numbers. Sack totals, picks, though. Bit of a yikes. So, uh, I mean, maybe Khalil Mack with an MVP of defense, perhaps. I don't know. Pearson, number seven, though, on the MVP list. Speaking of, Von Miller on the Giants. That's an interesting one. And, yeah, this is another unproductive season. But, I mean, we're getting close, right? 86 overall. I mean, we're only getting better every season. Specifically, Pearson should be a superstar. Maybe some others are superstar. And the Cowboys have a chance to win another Super Bowl back-to-back. -back. I think they won the last one, right? I think they just won back-to-back. -back. All right, let's take a look at potential DevOps. And Pearson does go up. That's actually pretty clutch as he's 24 with superstar sleight of hand and conductor. What a nightmare. That is... Kind of disgusting. And then defensively, we have Brooks, who's an X-Factor now. No dev-ups to the corners, unfortunately. Matthew Ioannidis goes up to Superstar. Do you regress? No? I mean, that's a pretty clutch signing, considering super, super strong. Eddie Jackson looking to be replaced as he's 30 now, and, you know, regressing in speed. I mean, this could be his final season where he's actually decent. Mac didn't really regress too hard, so the team's still pretty much intact, and our, our cap situation's pretty solid, right? So... Leno, we're going to let go. We didn't need to, but might as well, right? And then the rest just don't even really matter. So 25 mil to work with. Is there anything we can do to get cheaper? Because I don't want don't to spend anything if I can't afford it. Okay, so Eddie Jackson is someone that like... Okay, so we can get rid of Eddie Jackson for maybe like a fourth round pick. Uh, I don't really want to give it a safety too much, but you can completely clear yourself of uh, Khalil Mack. So we'll see what we can do there. Uh, so, so we do have some options to get rid of some contracts here, which is definitely clutch. Eddie Goldman definitely won't be able to, right? That sucks because we do have our youngster. We may still start him over Eddie this season, though. All right, so we're looking to get rid of Eddie Jackson. We save a decent bit of money. We get uh, Burgess on a four-year 24, I believe, which is tremendously cheaper. What is our draft pick? Nine again, exactly. Uh, but yeah, we can definitely trade off Eddie for like a fourth or maybe a fifth round pick. All right, Eddie Jackson and Shaheen to the Colts for 125. You know, kind of got scammed there, but one year deal, you know, not very team friendly from Eddie. But yeah, we save a lot on that. All right, so we ended up getting Tamori and Terry, and we did pay a two year 14 for Cody Ford. Uh, could play tackle, could, you know, move interior, whatever it is, could stay a guard. Uh, it definitely gives us a little bit more flexibility and not forcing us to take alignment in the draft. Uh, but speaking of the drafts, there's a decent looking pass rusher. And you know the saying around here, Chase Young clone. I'm not going to get too crazy because yeah, I can't really tell because uh, he looks better than a, than a Chase Young clone, honestly. But there are multiple linemen here. So what we're looking to do is keep moving down until we see one guy remaining mid first there, early first there. And a mid first there. So we obviously want Norman the most, but I think we might be able to get away with sitting where we're at and not having to trade up to get one of the pass rushers, which depending on how good they look, maybe we trade Mac. I'm not sure. Donnell goes. Oh, Hobbs. Look at that guy. Knight goes. And then with our pick, we have the choice between the two. 
Zay Norman, who looks obviously the clear-cut better player, or Will Johnson, who may be an actual better outside linebacker. We also do have a lineman, Nate Woodson. Ooh, Nate Woodson's a late first. I thought we were going to have to take him up here. Honestly, with what we have, we have this guy too. With what we have, I think maybe you actually try to trade up and get both. But we're going to start with one now. Zay Norman mid first. Hoping for the best. And he looks pretty good. That may be enough for me to trade off Mac. I think we are. I think we're going to trade him off. Zay Norman. 88 speed, 88 excel, 80 finesse, 78 tackle, 71 block shed. He looks solid. That looks like a top three pick, maybe even the number one overall pick, depending on if any lineman wins. Uh, Will Johnson, we don't need two linebackers. Uh, Brian Cody or Woodson, I think Woodson looks a little bit better. And more importantly, if Cody and him both are normal, at least Woodson's younger. That's that's really the best we can do. So I think we're going to move to like 20, and then if he's there... We will make the trade up. Never mind. He's already gone at 14. Both guys are gone by pick 16. That is very sad. <laughs> that makes me sad. Uh, I guess we'll be trading Mac for a next year situation play, right? Got his bully. All right. So, I mean, I guess we'll go to pick nine. And then we'll take whoever looks the best of the guys we have from the third round, I suppose. Unless some of them are late third, which I don't think they are. Do have a quarterback as well. You don't really need a quarterback, but in early first, can you really pass on someone that looks as good as that? I don't know. Michael Gore looks really solid. Don't think we need a wide receiver that much. Pass rusher, of course, we ended up getting that. I think we're actually going to take Bowley here. Do we? Yeah, we'll take Bowley. Stefan Bowley, and that's a good pick. 77 overall normal. This may allow us uh, to get rid of Trill. This may allow us to get rid of Trill, even though I don't want to get rid of Trill. I just think that you can't afford everyone. That's kind of how you know a franchise works. It's hard to keep all three uh, cornerbacks. And Santi's still there. We're, we're going to trade up to the Eagles. This is just ridiculous. Even if he's like a 73 normal, that's at, at this round, that's still a win, right? But yeah, we actually could probably trade off Trill for like a second round pick. He's like, in my opinion, he's that good, right? It's just circumstantial, man. There's not much you could do. Fifth round pick next year, is that fair? It apparently is. I mean, it's only like eight picks, so it doesn't... It's not crazy. Maybe should have given him a fifth this year instead. Johnny Santi looks all right. Let's see how good he is. 72 overall normal. You can't put a price on a backup quarterback. That's you know really good. He's very solid. Damn, my running back's gone too. I mean, I guess we're going to be trading down. We end up trading our high fourth for the Seahawks third and seventh next year. Safety's somewhat high in the list. Nothing crazy though. Vince, uh, what's his name? Vince Bennett. Not bad either. Early seventh. I think we're going to take the guard. Zach Johnson. See if we get lucky. And, of course, we do not. O-line is just brutal, the draft. And I'm saying that that guy was, like, the greatest player ever. But I suppose worth a, a try. And we do have another guy, a center, late seventh. I think we're going to trade this down. This is just way too high. Going to get a fourth off of the Eagles. Not a bad team to trade with. Traded twice with them. Basically, our new, uh, our new friends. And then... Ooh, interesting. There's actually more than... The players I was expecting to be here. So Bruce Farrell, not bad. Vince Bennett. I mean, I'm just going to take the punter, honestly. Dennis Payton. Looked like one of the best punters I've ever even seen in a CPU-generated class, and yet that's what happens. Nice. How many hit-ins did we land? Just one? I mean, we landed one hit but the rest of the players were actually pretty good. So Zay Norman, our new what appears to be left outside linebacker. Mac probably traded to a good team for a straight-up uh, first, I think. And only star... I really thought that was going to be one of those Chase Young clones where he's just an X-Factor. Wasn't. Uh, Dave Donnell, a lot slower, but he has both tra uh, both styles anyways. Insane stamina. Got spin move, bull rush. He looks really good. Let's take a look at what that dev is. Maybe Superstar, maybe X-Factor. I can't imagine it would be only normal, though. Let's take a look. And yeah, he is Superstar as we expected. And then the big question, oh, who's this Hobbs guy, though? Oh, damn, son. This guy looks... Like a god. Derek Brown from last year's draft. Yeah, I mean, superstar. Okay, I mean, maybe we have to start paying attention to DTs. Maybe there's Derek Brown, uh, what is it called? Colognes as well. I don't know. Uh, where's the guy we were going to go with? And here he is, Mr. Will Johnson. Another hidden. So all three guys were pretty good. So far, just off of skills, this guy looks like the worst. But obviously, Dev 
matters a lot. If he's an X Factor, he's easily the best then. And he is... Okay, so yeah, we made the right decision, right? Also, let's take a look at the guard, Nate Woodson. No, hidden development. Automatically, like, a top five pick just because of that dev and decent overall, obviously, and his development trade is... <sighs> that would have been an insane class if we would have got him at 20. But we didn't, so here we are. Still, that corner we got is good, too. So we actually should be able to get a decent bit of value here with Mac. How old is Mac? 33. Maybe a first is a little bit of a reach. At 33... I mean, maybe you're getting, like, a high second at best. Uh, we could do, like, a, a duo type of thing, though. We trade Trill and him to a team that's defensively needy, I suppose. I mean, these things can happen, right? We can get this going. Man, this would have been the perfect team, but they just can't afford him. I don't know if there actually is a team that can afford a uh, Mac. We actually did find the perfect team. The Falcons. Corner and linebacker. Well, not really linebacker, but pass rusher need easily huge needs and it works out we save a ton of money we have a youthful starter there now and we add a first round pick so i mean we couldn't get it done with max so i can't imagine we're gonna get it done without him all right you guys know the drill we usually do five seasons so we're on to the second to last season now uh with the bears having 291 overall wide receivers alan robinson's got to be on his way out soon though and 31 years old uh, he did lose a little bit. What's his speed now? Oof. Still a god jump baller, but yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. O-line, uh, it's not as good as, you know, the, like, second year, I believe, maybe third year, but it's still pretty solid. Right guard, solid for two seasons. Daniel is still good for many. Uh, actually, might need to re-sign him next season, actually. Uh, Davis, gotta re-sign him maybe this season. Crowder, even though he's normal, he's, he's actually not terrible. Uh, Cole Komet, we re-signed recently. Defensively, looks really, really good. I mean, there's not much to say. I mean, it's a good team. EA is just kind of screwing us. No playoff berths, really? We're not even good enough to make the playoffs right here? Actually, we did make the playoffs. What am I talking about? All right, so uh, another cornerback up for uh, contract. And Mr. Tyson Campbell, the best of the trio. Well, Trill's gone now. He is uh, going to get a, was it a six-year deal? Wyatt Davis, not really asking for that much, considering, you know, he's a premier tackle. Could move him over to left tackle and... And really screw his contract up. Uh, Cody White here could actually get a year off of us. Uh, Eddie, not a chance. Tory Carter, maybe if our running game actually looks okay this season. If not, there's no point. And then Matthew Ionite has been a super, super big surprise for us. Well, maybe not surprise, but you know, him getting a superstar has definitely given him that two-year added on. I was thinking maybe we'd give him one more year, if that, if he was star. But obviously, at superstar, we're keeping him. Headed to the playoffs, and there's no messing around this time because we just straight up sucked. 6-10, and ten, despite having a very good roster. I'm not really sure what's going on here. If we're just playing tough teams or we got to change the scheme or something. But uh, Pearson, definitely his worst season so far considering how decent of an overall he is. Montgomery hasn't really played super, super well. Mooney has always been pretty damn solid. Robinson's all right. Just another disappointing season. Going to be going on to year five with... Not a lot of hope, honestly. Zay Norman does pretty well. Might actually get to Superstar. Jalen Johnson might get to Superstar. Not even going to look at awards. It just doesn't matter. What a joke, man. Sim has just been brutal. It's because it's a it's the roster name. The Bears, you know, they just, they just aren't projected to do well usually. So that's what they give them. And at least Mac gets himself a Super Bowl ring. As you can see here, 35 to 31, the Falcons win. All right, let's take a look at the potential DevOps offensively. I am yeah, maybe Robinson, but not a super reach, but yeah, maybe Robinson, but no. And ooh, Johnson and Norman. Not actually bad. Let's take a look at Superstar. What do you get? Recuperation. How the hell it was Burgess always 80? How did he not go up at overall at all? That is so strange. But Lipton obviously going to be the starter again. I mean,. You already know the drill. We're going to try our best. We, we've we built what seems to be a pretty good roster. I'm not really sure what else we need to do. I mean, you can't have every position perfect, right? Cody Whitehair, uh, that's a pretty favorable contract. The thing is, even though it says that's what's fair, it's not going to be what he accepts. I mean, we we gave him like almost a mil and a half more than than he wanted. Let's see if we can just load up in, the, in free agency. We have about 40 mil to work with. The thing is, we have to pay players. It's just... Do you pay the players for a potential reload that may never come? Or do you, 
you know, save your money and re-sign. I, I just don't. I don't know, man. Like, we got 44 mil to work with. Hopkins isn't somebody I would go for. Maybe Zach Martin O-line would be nice. Uh, Wyatt Teller, I think that's just too good of a deal not to. I mean, that's not saying it's too good of a deal, but too good of a player, and the deal's not bad, so I think it's worth it. Ooh, Ragnow might be better, actually. Let's take a look. I mean, I'm just going to use my mental memory here. I, I don't know. I guess that's what memory is. Oh, Wyatt Teller's definitely better. It's not even close. Khalil Herbert is not very good. And we do get Wyatt Teller. I mean, that's a pretty big signing. A, a key lineman like that could change an entire roster, especially if you put him around like left tackle, but I'm not going to here. Uh, left guard will be Cody Ford. I mean, I'm not really sure what else we can do for the team. I mean, I feel like it's... It's definitely good enough, right? I mean, it should be good enough. You have a 90-plus quarterback, two 90-plus wide receivers. Tight end's okay. O-line's one of the best in the league. Defensively, like, we got to be one of the best teams in the league. What's our defense rating? 89, 92, 0. I mean, you got to remember, we haven't made, like, and like we missed the playoffs for, what, three straight years in a row? Let's see what our overall is comparatively. So, I mean, we're one of the best teams in the league, but yet we went, what was it, 6-10? and 10? I mean, I wouldn't even say we're one of the best. We are the best team in the league. The Falcons are actually a decent overall, in fairness. But I mean, I don't, I don't really know exactly what's what's happening here. All right, Von Brooks. Um, yes, but no. Like we'll resign him, but uh, well, we'll likely resign him. I don't know how much it's going to be. We'll likely resign him, but uh, as of right now, uh, we will not be given the option. Of course, the quarterback needs to be resigned because he wasn't a first rounder. And yeah, let's let's pretty much get into it. We have a mid first DT who looks really good, and I think I'm willing to take him if he's there. And if he's not there, I'm gonna be kind of sad because I don't really know if I have a guy I'm willing to take outside of him. I don't even know what his name is, but apparently he's still there because I don't think a single DT went in general. Uh, you have this guy, not bad. This guy, you know, not bad. And uh, this guy, he's not bad and all that. But this is the DT. He looks pretty good. I, I mean, this kind of looks almost exactly the same uh, as the guy we already take had taken before. But, I mean, it's either take a wide receiver, trade down, or grab this DT. Our left end is a high overall, but he is normal. I think I'm willing to take a Martin Pruitt. Let's do it. And <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. He's literally like a clone of the other guy we just took. And he's not bad by any means, but, man, what an interesting one. All right, so there's not really anything there. The Seahawks are willing to trade us their first next year and a third next year. So, I mean, I'm willing to do it, obviously. I think that's where we – no, we got it from the Falcons. And they take a left end. With this pick, I'm probably going to take a center who's going to be normal development. And, you know, it's going to be a vicious cycle. Uh, Jesse Taylor, it's it's all RNG at this point. And we do land a hidden. Finally land a hidden. I mean, it's probably not going to matter because I don't even know if we have a spot for him on the starting roster. But – I suppose for the future, I, I don't know, something. Regardless, finally, we get something going for ourselves. Don't really need a DT, but do you just take them anyways, I guess? I mean, block sheds, a power move, 3.9. I mean, I guess we'll just take another DT, Chris Merle, and 69 overall, normal. Lots of DTs, huh? Lots of, we have back-to-back -back picks here. I'm going to trade this down as well. And we get a second-round pick from the Raiders next year, so... Uh, even though we're not going to be playing this for another season, something tells me that this will be a likely candidate for a reload. Do we take another DT? I'm going to take all the damn DTs. Cam Cummings, not a bad pick. Okay, so we loaded up on D-line, and that's all I really can tell you. We load up on D-line. Let's get to the fifth round and uh, take the running back now. All right, it might be a reach, but we're going to take him. Rashad McKenzie, 68 overall normal. Uh, yeah, kind of a Tariq Cohen type, right? Tony Cohen's like, uh, pl uh, please don't. For the final pick of the draft, I'm going to take a fullback, Mr. Mike Harris. 64 overall normal. We had another fullback, but he was already taken. Really good blocking, actually. Damn. All right, we landed a singular hidden development trade player, and he has star development as expected. Yo, I don't know if this was the guy, but that is one of the best wide receivers I've seen in a Madden Sim. I can't say the best because he is kind of a smaller uh, player, but 5'11", 182, 96 speed, 95 excel, fights for yards, run after, you no know, keep feet and bounds, which is kind of sad, but X-Factor, nice. 
All right, 89 overall team. Now, after moving some things around, still would be the uh, top three team in the league, even though we went 6-10. and 10. This is the final season no matter what, even if we make the playoffs and we go to the semifinals. I don't care. Five years is – it's not a reload at that point. It's, uh, it's literally just uh, – a scroll, a passage of time. It's not even, you know, how long. To, it's not even a rebuild. It's just like, well, I mean, I would hope you got it done. I mean, it's a whole new era now, basically. And Von Brooks is willing to give us the hometown discount, it appears, as this man's a freak, yet he doesn't want a whole lot. I mean, that's good money for a linebacker, don't get me wrong, but still. Uh, Kirk Pearson, I mean, he's obviously good enough, right? He's, he's without a doubt good enough. So off seven-year 232, the Bears finally get their quarterback of the future. James Daniels has been worth every penny. We're going to give him the three-year. Bilal, we just can't afford. I mean, to simply put, we have too many defensive linemen. Cody Ford's been all right, but pass block's a little low. We'll look for someone new. Lambert, yeah, it just wasn't it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't a great uh, pick by us. Santos has been kind of iffy. Hasn't been consistent enough to get another contract. And uh, Robinson's really the biggest question mark because I don't know how far he's going to regress. Really good catching, but Obviously, overall, still a little iffy because, you know, that overall is dropping as he keeps getting older. Headed to the playoffs. Will we be in them? We will not because EA is a garbage company. I will show you guys that we were doing really well and then we lost. The bear way just was the opposite way as uh, we lost five straight, missed the playoffs. I'll show you guys the stats, show you guys, we, you know, all that stuff. I was going to say we didn't cheat, but we haven't even made the playoffs here. Kirk Pearson, 28 is 5. I don't know. I mean, I changed the scheme a couple of times, and the team's just not built to win, I guess. I, I mean, I don't. I really don't know what you need more than what we have a top five O line, top five defense, uh, top five receivers. Quarterback's got to be top 10 at least, right? Let's actually take a look. Let's, let's take a look at Pearson. Just based on overall alone, he is, like I said, top 10 quarterback. I mean, I don't know what else you need. I, I'm really not sure, but 26 in offense with those guys. Interesting to say the least. These are the numbers. These are the numbers. The stats. Take a look at who wins the Super Bowl. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much going to be it, right? I, I don't know what else we can do. Jaguars versus the Panthers in the Super Bowl. And the Panthers win. Let's take a look at Robinson. I don't think we would have even had a single dev up. But yeah, Robinson ooh, did regress a decent bit here. And yeah, man, really be looking to maybe re-sign, like, just some backups, nothing really other than that. Do we have any dev ups? I mean, it really doesn't matter anyways because we're done here, but uh, no dev ups on offense. Defense, maybe someone. Uh, Johnson was already superstar. I don't think we actually did get any, uh, any dev ups, but, I mean, this is the team that's not going to make the playoffs for how many seasons... I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's EA Sim is just broken. It's it's really just based on what name you have, what your what your team name is. As uh, we'll actually take a look at the two teams that made the Super Bowl. There, I can't imagine they were 92 overall, right? I don't imagine both were 92. So let's take a look. Jaguars at 88 overall, and the Panthers at 88 overall. So best team in the league can't even make the postseason, let alone the Super Bowl. I don't know what to tell you. That's the Chicago Bears rebuild. I'm sorry, Bears fans. This is not my doing. Uh, even as a Packers fan, this this makes me mad. Like, this is just so stupid. But who knows? I mean, we still built a really good team. We at least know that for a fact. Was it good enough to win the Super Bowl? Probably. It's not, no, it's not the best team we've ever built, that's for sure. But a lot of that probably does have for the fact, uh, come from the fact that we didn't, you know, get any playoff bursts. We didn't win any playoff games, you know. You get a lot of XP for winning those games. You get like 5, 10K every time, you know, every once in a while here. You know, that's a lot of XP missed out. It's a couple extra points on pretty much every player. You have 291 overall corners. Your strong safety is an 87. Your linebacking core is by far the best in the league. I mean, what is Roquan Smith's overall? Fourth best middle linebacker in the league. Von Brooks, who's still getting better, is 11th best. Uh, Josh Allen, he is the third best. Norman, who's only 23, is already the seventh best. I can't imagine the corners are super, super high. 91 overall makes him the 21st, so 21, 22 probably. I mean, it is it is what it is. I mean, there's nothing else I can say. Anyways, even though we got cucked by EA, hopefully you guys still found some sort of enjoyment out of this. If you have any ideas for rebuilds in the future, let me know in the comment section below. 
And because of how bad this was, maybe we will have to do another Bears rebuild. So hopefully the Bears have an interesting draft. Go quarterback in like the first round somehow. I don't know. Do whatever you got to do to make it interesting for me. Uh, but like I said, you know, hopefully you still enjoyed. If you did, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, PK Plays. Twitch.tv slash Jumpy Care. And like I said, with the second channel, PK Plays, we should have a Gears of War video up later today on the second channel, PK Plays. Maybe a stream on Twitch.tv around uh, slash Jumpy Care uh, around 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. If not, 100% tomorrow. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video... See ya! How is he gonna tie this to the boat? This is the new boat. Kid, that's your boat. This is my boat. Tree in one arm. Fat bitches in the other one. Like, this is this is the definition of me bringing in, like, a 12-pack of soda into the house. I'm a child. I explore. Oh, he's got tattoos. This kid's freaking wild. And someone needs to put this kid in the scared straight program. That just looks like Uncle Tim when you're, like, taking a bath. Uncle Tim, get out! I'm naked! That's the best part. I can't, I'm not gonna... No, no, no. Whoa! Found it. Slow down, boy. That's what we're hunting?